Champs are here for our first game between these two teams. LGD over on the blue side with their red logo. VG over on the red side with their white logo. Azir van out there by LGD. Cast it in the next band there for VG. Pretty standard stuff so far. Probably the most consistent performer from VG. It's not one you would have picked pre -season. It's been Vasily. It's been very consistent on 80 carries, particularly Tristan. And of course, I bring that up because we're on 5.21. The reworked Tristana is available to be chosen right here. There's kind of a lot of uh, conjecture over whether that Tristana is strong, isn't strong. It definitely has some huge burst in the early to mid game if she's able to activate her E with the, uh, the W rocket jump. So she has positions of power, but will the traditional Tristana player show off for the first time here. Well, we've seen, we've seen a lot of, I think, very similar looking stuff as the players sort of feel out the new patch here, but Banta's still coming through. Jana Rek'Sai there for LGD, their second and third, and the second there for Vich is all Rumble. So again, a lot more of the expected stuff here, despite the changes, and Zed, that's a bit different there for Vichy. Yeah, it's very interesting to see that. Wayless has been performing pretty consistently, but just not been able to parlay some good laning into carrying his team. The Zed blind ban is just really surprising to me right there. I wouldn't have expected a Zed lock-in, and it leaves up Lissandra, that flex pick, as the first pick for LGD. Yeah, lots of respect there given to Wales, who's had some great games, but feels like he kind of goes with his team. He's very good at playing cleanup or janitor duty on the champions he has. Maybe not necessarily carrying like Imp was doing when they were playing very well, but Lissandra, the strong pick here, and plenty of good options now for Vichy. And it's still, exactly, that's, that's the big thing here, is that although you, you take the Lissandra, there's two strong champions available. And uh, Callista is in the LPL because it's been banned consistently, been picked in drafts very early. The very early lock comes in here from Vasily. Yeah, actually pick it over Java in there as well. So now Callista, the uh, startings of the Vichy draft. And Vasily's been the other Callista player, has had success on that champion as well. You're right that a lot of AD carry players are flocking to it. And like you said, it's not just Marta anymore that's really pulling their weight in the bottom line. Vasily's played very well in the first five weeks as well. You know, they already had their gap closed locked in. It was already the Sandra first pick coming out. The Vi pick is added to that already in this draft. They're discussing the next pick. That's already two very strong gap closes to deal with the Hyper Mobile Callista. Callista needs to get the autos away. There's a lot of upfront CC coming from just the first two picks. Yeah, and if this does settle in, and it will hit from LGD, Graves there in the bottom lane against that Callista and the Vi in the jungle as well. And we didn't quite get to mention it yet, but Dandy, you know, we used to kind of pair Dandy and Mata together, but it seems like Mata and Vasily kind of more of that duo now. Dandy's just doing work all on his own. And I mean, Dandy actually showed off a fantastic Vi in a series last week. LGD have locked in the Vi. They are currently 0 1 playing Vi and 0 3 against Vi. It's been a horror pick for them. Taking it away from Danny, that might be one thing, but they just haven't seen success with this champion or against it. So they're going to have to change and arrest that slump if they're willing to get back into this series. Yeah, more changes here as well for VT. Needle has actually been locked in there as well, and Annie probably for support there for Mata. So a bit more aggressive in the support role, and that could be finally the jungle Needle. It could be. I'm not willing to commit to it because, again, much like Clear Love, I don't see Dandy being it, it fitting Dandy's playstyle. Ideally, but I'm sure he's been practicing in solo queue. It's been so, so popular on this 5.2 patch. Since some balance adjustments in the later 5.3 patch that's just been released. But yeah, I mean, with the Ari mouse over here, it would be likely be a jungle in Italy. I mean, quickly, just with the Wombo, the LGD are really completing lots of hard engage here. It is already by Lissandra. Now, Kennen and Leona added to that lineup as well. Vasily has his work cut out for him, keeping people off his back this game. I mean, when we see Callista work and we see them at the back of a fight, spreading those uh, Ren targets, getting so much lifesteal on, living a lot longer after the initial gap close, but the gap close never ends from LGD, even now with Kennen running in. It's the second time we've seen the Kennen vs. Nar match. It didn't work up for Looper last week. You can see that they're very similar champions in lane with a lot of range. Should be safe there, the Kennen. But I haven't been convinced by Ken so far this season. Yeah, I mean, it's just one play. We'll see how Echo can do. But Hatong did take the Zerus, which does mean that Dandy has the jungle nidalee. And this is one of the things that we didn't expect coming into the new patch, but was sort of available here. And Dandy, I believe the first play for the LPL now for jungle nidalee. Yeah, the first jungle nidalee. Of course, Pawn, we thought it would be clear love taking. And that would have been the greatest of styles clash to see uh, clear love picking up the jungle nidalee. It ended up being the mid nidalee there. So we were a bit disappointed. But going to see it here from Dandy. The damage ganks from Nidalee are just so surprising. They're from such long range because you can't react to a 1,200, 1,400 range skill shot. And then it gives that targeted uh, gap close. There's a lot of burst potential coming in. If the lanes have the CC to add to it, can be very effective, but can also be prone to counter jungle, especially if there's uh, a lane swap and you group in and invade Nidalee's jungle. And 2v2 in the early game struggles to skirmish with those higher base stats uh, junglers. Yeah, I mean, I like a lot of what it does in this comp. It's kind of 
fit into a very rounded comp. There is a lot of CC, actually, between the Nar, the Zerath, and the Annie. So they do have options there as far as engage goes. But you're right, it's a very different sort of jungle pick. and doesn't really suit Dandy's regular style, I guess. No, it doesn't suit his regular style. But you can see what they're going for here. They, they see the team fight Wombo and LGD's side, and they want to out-rotate. They want to poke, and they want to take this game in a split bush fashion. In a 5v5 fight, they do not stand up to just so much team fight control and damage coming out from LGD. It's going to be the split push favor of Callista right here. With, with the Hurricane, can still push waves, can be effective as a split pusher, but in a team fight, there's no way she can stand up to all that AoE damage. Yeah, we do have a brief pause in the game as well, so it shouldn't be too much longer before we get in, but a slight delay there. And you said it here, Callista, who already struggles against the likes of Lissandra Vi, LGD have uh, a plan here, and it seems to be to pick on Vasily, who's been playing quite well, because that's almost all of the engage you could ever need. I mean, Lysandra Vi might be enough, but Leona and Cannon as well on top of it. And it's they have so many engage options, as you said. The, uh, the engage will be reliable just because they have so many chances that even if they flash, even if they fall down, they'll still be able to re-engage. The question is, they've got a melee support, they've got a short-range AD carry, they are prone to be being lane-swapped on. It's the rotational play that will win feature this game because in team fights they can't hold a candle to all that CC. Well, let's see. We're on pause and onto the rift. And welcome onto the rift, ladies and gentlemen. LGD here playing their first game of the week here for week five of the Chinese LPL. They're the blue team here on this one. Vici over on the right. They're going to repeat some of the success they had last week and as well. And a big clash between two big teams. And of course, the centerpiece here kind of down towards it. Mata versus Imp. Yeah, they're going to go for the aggressive engage, in, invade for Vision right here. It makes sense with the Nidalee jungle to not play reactively because you're always at the risk of being late invaded. And if Nidalee's taken away from above, this, the camps actually scale really fast and she she's, has trouble clearing them if she's really denied off those first couple of levels. So smart to engage for Vision here. Look for any potential uh, camp stealaways, but just try and give some safety and predictability to the enemy jungle just to give Nidalee the time to get those first few levels. Yeah, we I did allude to it a bit as well there, but one of the other things jungle Nidalee is quite good at, in the early levels especially, is actually dueling the enemy jungler. So the more space you're able to create in your enemy's jungle, the better your Nidalee is going to have. It's, it's just a kind of a weird kind of polarizing thing that if you can get on top of that Nidalee, her base stats let her down and she can't skirmish quite as well. But if you if you can't, and if you're if you're, if you're invading as the Nidalee, once you get maybe the level 2 and just have access to multiple rotations of your human form and ranged form spells, then you do invade very well. So it's, it's certainly peaks and troughs, but the, the most potent way to deal with, an, with a jungle Nidalee is to keep her from the, her first buff. If you can keep her from her first buff, if you can keep her from that quick level 3, picking up all her skills, that obvious rotation of spells in cougar form, then she struggles. And Jungle Nidalee is a very weird champion, right? Like, kind of came as something that people started playing with in solo queue after some changes and has seen some success on some play internationally around the world. But if we take the Nidalee out of Beach's comp for a second, what else do they do? Well, I mean, the Nidalee augments a lot of the, the pokes. So, of course, they've got Xerath in the mid lane, so they clearly have a lot of line poke if they're trying to skirmish. They've got the Nar for a bit of team fight. Um, a bit of team fight control. But the Callista bottom lane, and the Callista Annie they're running there, in a 2v2 situation, it actually does stand up quite well against uh, Graves' Leona. You have to be careful as Annie in the early levels to not get all in by that level 2 Leona. is taking Ignite, so you know, it's going to be very aggressive, aggressive posturing from PYL in a 2v2 matchup. But I can definitely see the flavor of what they're going for in their comp, but it does evolve split pushing a lot here. They need to rely on getting excellent aggressive warding into the enemy jungle to open up space for Callista to be able to split push because the moment all those AoE CCs were locked in, team fighting kind of went out the wall if you're Callista. Yeah, that's I think pretty fair there as well. Just from even the early, again, the early picks in the draft and maybe Eldred's issue here is that if Dandy can get aggressive here on this Nidalee, then Schwen's going to have a bad time because his Vi, as you said it, LGD have had no success with Vi, either playing with or against her. So Schwen probably got a lot of practice in the last week given how popular Vi was, but has to have a good game here as well. And Vi is a very obvious counter pick to Callista. Able to get on top of her, able to lock her down. No Morgana selected here, so we'll have to eat the Assault and Battery Engage. And there's so much more engaged. Again, it just it removes options for LGD. You can team fight as a Callista in a lot of situations. She struggles against frontline tanks. There's no, there is the NAR, but there isn't. Uh, you know, a double frontline tank here, Dandy especially, definitely not a frontline tank coming from the jungle. 
But all this CC is, it's just, she just doesn't have any options. She doesn't have the mobility because she's going to be locked down and killed almost instantly in a fight with so many dive options. So that's why the split push has opened up. Once you get Hurricane, once you try and opt into that split push block, you can use the rend to clear the minions. You don't have to cancel your orders. You can just clear the minions quite quickly. And the, the split push might be the best way to move here just because it's a short range bottom lane. It's Graze with the 525 range. It's Leona who has to go all in to initiate. The split push is their best option. I mean, what do we think of the aggressive bottom lane there as well? We kind of painted the match up here as uh, a little bit of Imp versus Marta. And LGD are clearly taking the much more aggressive lane into this, again, very short range, more late game scaling Callista. I mean, it's basically five dive champions if you look down the ranks. It's Cannon in the top lane is going to dive in with the Slicing Maelstrom. Uh, Chuen on the uh, the Vi is going to be going in with the Assault and Battery. Lissandra's gap closes. Her biggest asset gets past the Jhana peel. That's why we see so much Lissandra pay. Graves does most damage at melee range, even as a ranged AD carry. And Piwa has to go on all in as Leona. So it's, it's all across the board, all in potential. And there's no real disengage on Vici's side. In fact, it's more engage. They have great poke. They can take turrets well. They can split. But team fighting is just not an option. Yeah, and I do like that PYL's sort of back onto a more independent champion, I guess you could say. You know, not the Kalista the Imp seemed to want to play over and over and over again in the earlier matches last week. And, you know, a somewhat self-reliant carry here for Imp who can kind of carry on anything. He's had a lot of success on short-range ADs actually recently, especially Sivir, who is very popular. But PYL here as well. If he wants to roam, if he wants to make plays and get early vision down, he can pretty happily leave Imp to his own devices there. The first item buy will be the big thing. If he's able to go back and buy those mobility boots, there's so much setup CC in the other lanes, whether it's Kennen, whether it's Wayless' as Lissandra, that the extra CC from Leona should be enough to pick up kills. So if they can open up a vision advantage in the early mid-game and get those assassination kills, put the poke team behind an experience, maybe no way back into the game for Vici. I guess the big unknown, you know, the debut of Jungle Nidalee in the LPL, what sort of pressure can Danny provide? Because it's not going to be... When Vici have looked their best, it's been Dandy really aggressively putting in vision, whether it's been Vi, whether it's been the Java, and getting the aggressive vision in on Nunu, for example, and, and, and kind of controlling the enemy's movements. But that's not really a realistic build option for Nidalee. She doesn't really find time to incorporate Sidestone into her build among all the AP stacking you're looking to do to make those spears work. So maybe it will be a different flavor of Nidalee. I'd be very surprised. I haven't moused over to her base stats just yet. I assume it's going to be a decent stack of AP to clear the camps, but... It just doesn't fall under his usual playstyle. That's why it's kind of a mystery to me. I mean, that's the other thing that we've already seen today, actually, with earlier matches. We, of course, casted the first game here with EDG versus EP. And with the, the patch changing a lot and some more picks coming through, you know, players experimenting more and wanting to, you know, change some of their styles with the way that the metagame has shifted as well. Interesting that, you know, EDG sort of still stuck to their same game plan, but had to play a very mid-game centric sort of style. Didn't have the early game snowballing rotations, relied much more on pushing through their mid-game and sort of winning that way. And here for Vici especially, this is a big change here. If you're going to pick a champion like Nidalee, your style goes from, you know, playing a lot of Nunu and maybe a lot of Rengo and really being a control jungler like Dandy normally is to being, I don't know, a duelist, a poke jungler. I mean, Nidalee again, very strange jungle pick. And look, we can say the same thing about EDG on Clear Love there. We were so surprised to see him move away from the sidestone, but there's not been any changes to vision over these patches. So there was no real impetus, at least as far as we could see, in terms of transitioning towards a more frontline tank farming uh, carry jungle like Hecarim uh, in the first game. But it worked out for them. They played around the lack of ward coverage. And look, maybe Vici can do the same thing here. They can understand that it won't be the vision game that necessarily will win them the game in the early game. That's been the consistent in the wins. It's been... Dandy Marta getting that aggressive warding in and the team starting to learn what they can do and what they can snowball with the vision advantage they've been afforded by that world champion duo. But in this case, you know, he's going to have to build more selfishly. That's just how Nidalee's traditionally built. Whenever we've seen her in the EU LCS or across scenes, it's going to be the AP stacking coming out just for the potential assassination. I mean, Nidalee doesn't offer a lot more in a gank than damage. That's, that's basically what she's there for. There's some setups you see in the lanes, but it'd be definitely a different story if it was Nidalee Jungle on the LGD side. They've already got so much dive that Nidalee Jungle would almost, with the setup CC, would just be point and click spears into the assassination. Instead, so they've doubled down on dive with the Vi. So much initiation. Yeah, and we saw a little bit of that sort of Nidalee for damage, basically, to add into a lot of the, I guess, a pick composition there for EDG. I believe when Pong was playing Nidalee, that's a lot of what was going on, was the Corky burst from death and the Nidalee spears coming in. And as soon as someone ate a CC, whether it was a Mankai W or a skill shot, all of the damage comes through and you get picked instantly like that. Nidalee's very good at that. And I feel like her poking might not be as strong as it used to be. I mean, everyone remembers the terror days of the Spears all the way back in. And literally, they have a comp that I 
Dinks still fits their old style here. So if they've maybe shook out some of the kinks from last week, going to look very strong here. They do have they do have CC. I mean, of course, Annie can get the Tibbers in. Zareth has quite a lot of CC available in his kit. Nar can potentially get the Nar in. So there is set up CC for ganks. It's just not as linear as the LGDs. There's still more risk, more skill shots to be hit. On the uh, on the Vici side, no, it feels like a focus is probably going to be in the bottom line here, like we expected with him versus Mata. But we are back into the game now. LGD versus Vici, still a pretty big stack there for Vici down towards the bottom side. And we could be seeing a late invade now. Yeah, the 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 uh, lane swap has been initiated. Imp is at the top, but in a one v one against the top laner, they're going to have a bit of jungle follow happening here as well. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as this game goes forward, but. Yeah, I mean, the Nidalee jungle at least getting the first buff and starting off strong. Yep, so we can see it looks like blue going in there as well. But like you mentioned, Vici are stealing away that red imp versus carry actually in the top lane. Had a bit of a lane swap initiated here. I guess LGD right now are kind of sticking together jungling. Vasily actually 1v0 in the bottom right now. Very happy with how the swaps are working out. But lots of early three-man jungle actually coming out. In the trio jungle, so much CC available between Leona and the two that she's following there. But it's much more normal now. It's back to the usual the usual top laner following the jungle. Leona in the, has backed here. Picked up some extra wards there. Obviously looking for lane rotations here as PYL. But M's going to be very happy 1v1-ing Nar in the top lane. And I have to say, I love the, the little team play there between Vasily and Dandy as well. They're actually Sentinels kind of parading through the red side. So if uh, Dandy's afraid of himself getting through buffed or wants to know if they've come through there, they actually had a lot of advanced vision there as well. But Eldredi are going to trade buffs here and look to start vertical jungling. Yeah, they're spotted, but of course we'll safely pick up the two, the, two, uh, the two buffs here. We see they have three members top of the map. Even Leona adding a fourth body towards the top of the map. No way for Nidalee to contest that objective. And again, PYL back to more of the early game roaming here. Not quite the Annie that we saw from him where it looked devastating in level 1 and 2 ganks, but on Leona still being very proactive, happy to leave Imp to farm by himself because, again, he's a very self-reliant, very strong carry player, but that has to open up good room for Vasilis Callista as well. Yeah, Callista basically forced reactive play from PYL. He has to group to get the most out of the champion's kit, but it really hurt the team strategically, limited their options, and you can see with the amount that Leona's already been roaming in this game that it just suits PYL much more to have a more independent champion pick. Yeah, Mata still level one as well, so very independent here as well. Dandy actually starting off the dragon very early, and this is one of the things we didn't actually hit on. Jungle Nidalee pretty good at these early gimmick dragons. Yeah, you're so able to get the reset on your uh, different form, your, your Kuga form abilities. You can do a huge burst of damage. Mata actually able to tank up surprisingly well at level one here, you have to say. And that's a very early dragon, a four-minute dragon coming out of Vici Gaming. Yeah, so Vici getting creative. Dandy and Mata, friends old, friends of old from the World Championship. Still friends here as well on Vici. And a very nice steal away there to start off Vici's game just how they wanted it to. Yeah, and the one thing we haven't seen this side of the game, of course, is the 2v2 matchup. The, the Imp versus Mata lane matchup has been dodged so far, but we're all waiting with Beta Breath to see it actually come to the floor. I mean, I like that Mata actually has Annie here because he has the chance to potentially kill Imp, which I'm sure he'll be very happy about. And Teams in general have picked on Imp a lot when they've played against him. So Vici in general, you know, maybe it's a, a thing for Mato. He wants to make it a bit personal, but just a good strategy in general. Yeah, definitely. I and mean, we had the 2v2 lane and bottom lane. Cannon, of course, a AD carry of past metas, so can very capably work in a 2v2 lane. So, I mean, the Graves versus Anar in the top lane, both very tanky. Both have passives that give them extra tank stats. It's fairly even across the board despite these unconventional laning matchups. Yeah, it looks at like that early freeze in the top lane. Setting now behind a little bit. It's 10 to 6, like, actually between the two would-be top lane this year and about 35 each for the carries. So the free frame working nicely for the carries, but top lane's a little hamstrung in the early stages of the game as they try and get their farm as best they can. They're either their 1v1 or their 2v1 lanes. And it makes more sense for him to be getting the solo farm compared to Callista, just because, of course, Callista needs a person next to next to him to get, so next to her to get enough out of the kit. So... M is priced in to get the solo farm. That means that Carry will be able to get level 6. We'll get strong on this Nah. But the lane matchup kind of shaked out as expected. Yeah, and Schwen down the bottom there. Over on that fire. Does just kind of pop back into his base. And let's pick up the Trailblazer now as well. We've seen a lot of Trailblazers today, but Dandy actually doing something a bit different. Has uh, more of the classic there. Going with the Chillinx man again. A Wireless actually going in there, but Dandy going to successfully counter jungle away that camp. Yeah, we made the point that no CC available from that jungle nearly. Of course, Chilling Smite does give them a, give her a CC option. 
but it does make a, a clear that much more difficult. But Schwen looks like he's going to contest for this ground. Yeah, he knows what's on. Danny could be in trouble there. Looks like Schwen going to go back in with a flash. Popping over there for Vice. Schwen actually just missing the next auto. Dandy now going to jump in there as well. He's going to hop over the pit. We'll get to safety and no follow there for Vi. Wad's over, but can't chase. And the follow-up flash for level four Vi was just completely unexpected as in the bot lane and he falls down. Yeah, it looks like we had some issues there. Akon actually teleported up there as well by the looks of things to make sure that everything could work out okay. And the first one actually in the bottom lane, Marta gets bloodthirsty. Yeah, Marta gets bloodthirsty on PYL. So the Korean uh, superstar support gets the first blood in the face of the Chinese. And now Carry actually going to go for a walk here as well with the teleport going actually away from his tower. Knew the dive was coming, wanted to get away and Akon teleporting almost picked off Dandy there as well. Pretty amazing that Nidalee lived but and first blood as a result went to Vichy. I mean Nidalee has so much mobility from level 1 now that she has Cougar form abilities that early in the game so it's not that surprising to see uh, her able to pick up the, the escape right I was actually surprised to see the follow up flash coming from Vi just because just because uh, at level four, especially with two points in the Vault Breaker, you're just not able to close gaps once you've used the first charge of that. Yeah, that's one of the things where Vi, especially Pre-6, does have some issues closing those distances and really clamping down the gank. So Dandy got very aggressive with his counter jungling, but was able to almost get away with the Grom, but at least get away with his life there. So we are returning to a bit more of a standard look. Your Akon still down the bottom, actually, with Pure in that sort of... Uh, off standard 2v2 lane, but very serviceable there for Cannon and Imp as well. Picking up his so already got his BF sword, but Vasily's in the same boat. Yeah, they're very similar in terms of power spikes, but Imp is continuing to split. They are continuing to opt out of the potential 2v2 and bottom lane. Of course, the first dragon's already down, so they're not looking to contest that objective for at least a few minutes yet, but they're happy to have this Graze versus Nah matchup in the top. And it's looking very comfortable for Imp so far, so not super surprising there. Carry just can't quite get aggressive. I mean, it's funny, it's sort of two short-range 80 carries going against each other, at least when Mini Nah is concerned, but Graze is a little bit better in that role here, but Marta also joining Dandy now, and Dandy goes for another red buff steal. See some blue pings on the map, they're kind of aware that this is happening, they're just not in position to contest it. Dandy continues to monopolize that red side red buff, so the blue side red buff and steals it away. It does keep Vasily a little safer as well. Callista, as we've said, does need to scale up a little bit more. So Vasily going to be happy to be covered there by his teammate. But Schwen will get the red buff there as well. Dandy now going to continue the counter. It's almost hilarious that he doesn't have the poacher's knife. But he's done a lot of work taking things away from Vine, trying to keep that level 6 down for as long as possible. If you see the amount of LGD wards towards the top side jungle, the red side the red side of red uh, jungle right there. You can understand why Dandy's committing to the bot, but Mars is actually going in aggressive. Yeah, actually got Callista ulted in there. PLL could be in trouble. Just some damage coming through, but not quite enough to pick off Leona. But very smart play from the 2v2. It's a very good adaptation for Dandy to to monopolize that side of the jungle just because his top side jungle is so war over watered here from LGD. So Dandy jungling on the right side, jungling on the side with more members. Yeah, and that's what, often what we see when we use the term vertical jungling. The map sort of split in half by the junglers and they tend to take, you know, the top and bottom instead of the, uh, I guess, their side of the map here. So Tong does go ahead, not get the blue up, unfortunately. That did go to Dandy. Yeah, it went to Dandy there. Finally going to see, no, we're going to continue with this matchup in top. Graves doing his best to harass Nar off the minion map. The result in terms of CS is very even across the top laners. Yeah, so the would-be top laners here, of course, have been stuck in some 1v1 or 1v2 lands for a lot of this game. It's very even. The AD carry is keeping up here as well, so it's really a matter of who, who, where do we want to prioritize our farm. I feel like both Nar and Cannon are decent without too much farm, and I guess Graves versus Callista is sort of debatable. And the early pickup here from Danny is the tier. He can, of course, stack that with his... Uh, with his cougar form abilities, which don't have any cost, but he's investing in a scaling item as a jungler. Usually, junglers have to invest in the most cost-effective items because they're usually one of the lower uh, gold generation classes in League of Legends. So to opt in for that scaling, okay, Nidalee has strong base damages, but it just takes down her trading ability in the early game. Yeah, Dandy actually looking for a spirit to wear this. Doesn't hit it, though, and the Glacial Path will keep him safe. Looks like Zerat's just going to poke back and forth, but apart from that first kill for Mata, not much action except Vasilia. Mata going to start up Vici's second dragon now. Yeah, the second dragon is a very early clip here. They will be able to take it down and uncontested again, though Vi, Vi is at least interested at this point. I mean, looks like Schwinn might have a look, but it's going to be a little too late. Callista and Italy going to secure that very easily for Vici, and that's two in uh, ten and a half minutes there. That first dragon, that second dragon, sorry, got taken sort of the regular kit for a 
first dragon and imp there level eight versus six there for carry getting very aggressive onto the naran carry is starting to fall pretty far behind in cs we have to commend uh imp for his his laning in the top side here to be 19 cs uh, to have forced basically 19 CS away from the Nar compared to how much Cannon has picked up and to take the turret has been fantastic wave control here from him. Yeah, we can see Vasilian Lighter back down the bottom. Martha not quite level 6 yet, but does have a kill under his belt. Some quick Moby Boots there is on. Imagine a sight turn probably coming through next for Martha if he's got enough gold for it. Vasily in the meantime still farming over this BF sword. As Schwen's trying to clear out some wards in his jungle as well. So, apart from the first blood from Martha and a couple of early dragons, very close game. In fact, LGD, despite being down those objectives, are actually up about 400 gold. And of course, the value of dragon at these early stages is always hard to quantify. It's not reflected in the gold lead anymore. So, if you can pick up exit kills when one team picks up dragon, you might say that even if they have two dragon buffs, you're ahead in the early game. They haven't been able to do that. But in terms of farming and CSing, they're doing very well for themselves. Yeah, and Dandy continuing to be aggressive. It's actually about nine. He has also 10 uh, ahead of the other jungle, so has done a good job of keeping Schwen down. But Vi, now level 7, does have the ulti available, so can start to maybe impact these lanes. But again, LGD and their Vi success not looking great in the first 12 minutes or so. Yeah, with all the lane swaps and kind of the, 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 the vertical jungle, it's been very difficult for Vi to have an impact despite all the CC in the lane. So for her to be holed down and forced to just purely farming is a win you'd have to say for the team with Jungle Nidalee. I think so, as Dandy's going to rotate in towards the top there as well, down the bottom though. Imp continuing to farm, we've actually swapped back finally into our standard lane, so we'll eventually have Imp versus Martha. It looks like Akon looking to go in, Schwen as well getting aggressive, but Dandy knows what's up here. I'm not too sure what Nidalee adds other than damage, but that might be enough here. In fact, he's going to show himself and just start, just help carry push out the wave. Tran, I think, would have himself as well, so it makes this gank harder, but it looks like he's still going to initiate. Yeah, wants to go not to carry, but a good bounce there does come through. Flash actually used there as well by Nine. Now Dandy going to get altered there by Vi, but that's Cannon very far away. The side of the popping over the top, the W there, Lux. Now the ulti on the carry. The ulti from Cannon as well. And there's the double for Vi. So much lockdown CC coming when Lissandra comes up to the top lane there. They pick up the two kills. They're rotating good in the mid lane. They might actually get some damage into the turret, but no, her tongue's there to relieve pressure. Yeah, the Zerath wave could going to deny any dreams of that turret push here, but the CC chains, we kind of speculated about it in drop. Insane amount of chain CC available there to LGD. Yeah, and two kills both going down to Tren will accelerate the mid game for this Viking. Double down on damage, gonna work towards the Hex Drinker. So he takes the turret, he's in trouble. Yeah, hits the E there as well. Piriolo actually misses after the flash. Now Mata going back in, gets altered there by Callista, and Carrie's gonna move him, but Mata just pops himself back. Carry, not enough rage there. Gonna try and poke him down. PYL does get rendered, but flashes and heals there as well, and will be safe for now. Yeah, it's very interesting to see Mata go so defensively when he used the Callista, or maybe it was a misclick there, wasn't able to get the initiation up, had Tibbet had the stun, had flash, but no initiation coming from the Annie. Yep, got to close the wrong way there. Unfortunately, his friend will finally get a red buff from Z I think that's the first, actually, for Vi on uh, her own side of the jungle. So, Schwen again, starting to roam around a bit more. And the CC, when it works, works very well. Now, Vasily actually could be in trouble. Going to get punched. Good juke there. Now going to go back in onto Impa. The damage from Vi, pretty immense. Vasily uses the rem, but it's not enough. And a third kill now for Schwen. Imp was confident in dueling there, despite all the ren stacks piling on. But Schwen is so snowballing this game. 3 0 650 CS. Maybe the, the terrors of the LGD Vi will go away. Yeah, Whaler's still in trouble. The does go down to Dandy. Actually, didn't even need any more than a bolt from her Tong's ulti. And Imp still pushing aggressively in towards this section of the map as well. But LGD, they're starting to get kills now. That comp's really coming together. Yeah, they, they have so much lockdown CC. We talked about how team fighting wasn't a realistic option here for Vici. They need to double down on the split push. But Callista obviously was caught in their rotations. They've gone for the Bloodthirster first here, Rasili. We've seen that build almost exclusively from Crystal on champions like Draven just because of all his Q damage. It makes sense to have flat attack damage on the Callista, but she scales so well with attack speed. Well, I've got to check the max, I guess. And it is still the rend max, so the rend will be doing more damage per stack, but not the attack speed to really abuse that. Yeah, it's just a bit more of a defensive choice here for Vasily once... You know, basically that shield and a bit more life still and raw Eddie to help him as he pushes out these lands. It will help when he gets onto towers, but of course, not so much in the fights there. Varela Nomicon's actually up for both mid lands as well, and Imp is done with his Infinity Edge, so the items are starting to come out, and 
I have to say, this comp here from LG is very reminiscent of something we referenced today already, which was the old school OMG freight train stuff. You know, just go and use the ulti, and now down the bottom, Schwen is gonna dunk onto Vasily. So much damage with the collateral, and in for the infinity edge, shreds through Callista. No need for skill shots with that initiation. Flash assault and battery. Imp got into the short range for the QR combo. It's a very reliable team comp. That's the important thing I'll say for LG there is that they can get these engagements done very well, and Vici's split push so far has been punished at every turn. Yeah, I mean, they were getting good objectives around. Dandy especially was moving through with his needle, rotating with his team and helping push down objectives, but LGD are just getting kill after kill, and now they're getting objectives on top of them as well. Vici can't keep up if all they do is take objectives. The LGD are going to kill them and then take their instructions. And look, this is a new game plan here for Vici. For once, it's not about uh, Dandy and Mata trying to strangle Vision. They're inevitably going to be behind in Vision this game. And it's showing, and they just they haven't got the same options they're used to, and they're struggling to take any objectives. Yeah, good bit of poke there from Dandy, narrowly missing Imp to cancel that recall there as well. Dragon is back up, and if the one thing we can say for Vici in this game is their dragon controls look very strong. So if objectives are what Vici want in this game, they're looking for a third dragon very swiftly. Yeah, it's no, Graves isn't there to compete for this objective. Hatong is going to come down as well. The third dragon does come down, so they'll take the three dragons, but. Pushing further, pushing aggressively when teamfight is not really an option against this team will just prove difficult. They're going to have to rely on that fifth dragon, you'd have to think. I mean, maybe, and the third dragon does go to Vici, so on the way now, double wards are coming up from Impoyel, showing a bit of that synergy, but unfortunately they both get bad news at the same time. Dragon's already gone. Yeah, they've got a pretty good timer, though. It's not been the rough estimate. The first one really threw off the dragon control uh, from LGD just because it was taken so early. The level one and Annie being able to tank up that objective. Yeah, this is Mata now. On that Annie, gonna look to go back to base here as well. Doesn't quite, no, does have his sights turned, sorry, has won a couple of wards. So still being the same vision-centric support that we know him to be, but has been a little bit more aggressive on Annie and started playing it more as well in the LPL, moving a little bit away from his Janna that was so popular in some of the earlier weeks as well. We see Callista with Boots 2 now, so very important pick up there. And uh, Hadong's getting going as well. He's got a Nidasi Large Rod on top of that Marillion Omicron. Yeah, so that really doubles down in his wave clear. Once you pick up that big Nidasi Large Rod on top of an item like Marillion Omicron, you can clear waves from so long and relieve pressure. Of course, you'd always take Wayless as uh, Lissandra against the short and mid-range carries, but against the long-range uh, Zerath, all he can really hope to do is split farm. Yep, and that's what they're going to try and do here. Acorn as well. We're going to look through more items. Zonya's finished up very swiftly for Kennen, so that team fight that we talked about for LGD looking very potent right now. But unfortunately for them, they haven't been able to contest for a dragon yet because VG have stolen all of them. And VG at this point, as you mentioned already, they don't want to fight LGD. No, VG don't want to straight up 5v5 five five LGD at any point in this game without a pick. They do have pick potential coming out of their comp. Of course, at this point, with the... Magus enchantment coming through from Dandy. He has a very respectable amount of AP and has kept the regen coming up with the with the tier of the goddess. So we'll be doing good poke line damage between the Zerath and Nidalee right here. But they, it's, it's the dragon control that's really hurting for LGD. With all this CC, you'd have fancied them in a dragon bite, but they've been completely on the back foot ever since the first dragon. And it might translate to potentially some Baron control soon or later in the game as well. As Baron is going to spawn for the first time in just over a minute here as well. And you know, LGD may be taking precautions, but just taking their neutrals. Going to get the Scott Crab on that side. Vasily even checking out as well. And we've seen this a lot from Callista's, but the objective control secure potential that Callista has has been very popular among LPL players. Yeah, I'm looking for some aggressive aggressive wards for flank engages from LGD. Vici seem to be happy to opt in, look for the poke, you know, Zerath and Nidalee trying to find poke damage on a turret. They need the flank, specifically from Akon. If he can get the flank engage with the teleport, he's trying it now. Yeah, ulti gonna come there as well. That's an amazing ult though by Vasily to save and carry now. Could be in trouble, no Nabo. Akon dives in with the ulti. Vasily forced to flash out there as well. And Vici will try and reset. Good poke there as well. And here comes the Zerath ulti. Gonna chase Akon. A good Don is there to save him from the last ball. He throws it in, but it's a little missed time and can't get it. But now, Wayless has killed Vasily there for the next one. Nabo, another kill. But there's a double actually coming through for Lissandra. Maybe looking for a dribble. Doesn't get it, but a two for one trade. If the first initiate doesn't work, try, try again is the mantra from LGD. It looked like the flash, uh, the flash slicing Maelstrom wasn't enough, so it thought that the disengage would start, but Wayless was excellent with the self-cast on the Lissandra ultimate. They pick up the first few kills. There's no real objective for them to pressure, and maybe that'll be the factor as this game goes on. They're getting the kills, but not picking up the objectives. And LGD, you know, they did that a couple times, but you're right, in that fight in particular, sure, they win team fights. We kind of knew that already with the way their draft worked, but a Baron just spawning up is not really an objective. Death time is a very low here, and if Vici can be annoying enough for long enough, then 
They'll probably get themselves in the point. You know, they can split push out this game. And for me, the biggest thing is the gold difference. VG aren't just up three dragons to zero. The gold's about 2,000 between the two teams. Actually, less than that. Yeah, it's only 2,000 gold, which is not a big advantage, but it's with a team fighting comp. So whenever a team comp fighting comp is ahead in gold, they're looking for the flank engagers. They're looking for the hard engagement. It's, a lot of it's pretty linear. You know, obviously, Cannon wants to get right into the middle of a fight, run in there. And with the teleport being down and the flash being down, a lot of resources were used to secure a team fight win, but it'd be so much more important if that team fight was a round dragon or a bigger objective. Nick yeah, Carrier here in the top lane as well, just gonna push back that side wave. Well, this actually did a good job there on the Sunder using that very efficient wave clear to push Nara in a bit more. And Dragon is back in a minute 40 here. Vici could look for their fourth in about 23 minutes, which would be absolutely insane timer for that. And Hatong, I think you kind of felt a bit robbed in the last fight, did a lot of damage, but now is the death cap. If that fight happens again, Vici in a much better position. He's just another person though that needs to sit so far back because of all the gap close on the LGD side. The flash assault and battery is just off cooldown right now and can really close the distance from a long range. The solar flare has excellent range as well. There's just so much CC. It's just life is difficult for all these carries on the VG side. Ooh, fighting might be difficult though for LGD. So we'll see what happens here. He's dragging up in a minute five now. LGD would love to claim their first one finally here and they've got some good items to contest for it as well. I love the zone he's coming through for Wayless as his second item. So big spike there for the Lysander as well. Infus plus two items ready to go with the ship plus the IE, but things are still going decently here for Vici. They're getting their items up as well. They're getting good defensive wards, LGD, around this dragon, but not the aggressive wards to either get a flank or give them an idea of the positioning of this long-range carries like the Xerath. They want to get some advanced vision. They just haven't been able to walk through the wall of spears coming out of Dandy. Yeah, and you can see Mata waddling very aggressively there with, with the mobility boots on Annie. Dandy poking back and forth as well. They know they can't straight up fight LGD 5v5. Teleport's not up for Akon though, but he's already walking down as a result of that. Carry will have his. He's actually just transformed into Mega Nar, so won't have that available most likely once that objective rolls around. So Vici again, can't really look for a team, but have to poke off with the Xerath Needly. Yeah, 10 seconds, not looking to come down, but of course he does have the teleport. He's going to try and build up the rage. They need to disengage a fight for as long as possible here because their only real chance of a fight is a massive wombo between Carry and Marta. There is the potential for a huge wall stun coming out of the otherwise fairly poke-centric team. Well, LGD here are going to start their first dragon now of the game and take it very, very quickly. So VT very intelligently don't contest it, looking maybe for an objective as Dandy going to saunter over to the blue, but puts a ward down as well, keeping the vision up. But LG, VT, sorry, kind of know that if this keeps happening, they'll eventually just fall too far behind. Absolutely. The first dragon is okay, but they need to double down on working towards the fifth dragon. It's their real big win condition in this game because with the extra stats are folded, they're so easy to rot out rotate a team with the 10% move speed. The 12% AD and AB does help with turret pushing. That's where Vici's comp really has the ascendancy over LGD. The team fighting, though, we, we've said it so many times, it's not an option. So they have to double down on what they can do, which is pick up these objectives. I mean, for me, the other bridge sort of feels like getting the Baron buff for Vici, but even that's sort of a dangerous proposition. Because again, LGD, if you do that and they know the Baron's on, can walk in and team fight you, force you to fight, which is the last thing you want to have happen. So I like this from Vici, lots of aggressive wards and trying to find a pick, because that's really all they're left with options-wise. Yeah, Flash is just available on Mata, but is spotted out by the Shuriken right there. So he, he does have the Flash tip as possibility. I do agree with you. This is the nerfed Barons. There is the potential to take an early Baron. Vasily, of course, has the huge Baron secure on the Ren. But it, they need Nar to commit to tanking that, that Baron, so it becomes a bit more predictable. If it's not Nar and Vasily missing off the map, the, the Baron pressure is almost nil. Yeah, and you mentioned Vasily there. Maybe the plan for split pushing can finally be enacted now for Vici because the Hurricane has been completed along with that Bloodthirster now as well. So a very self-reliant Vasily there on this Callista. If uh, he's going to split push for his team, he's probably going to start the train rolling now. But he needs the ward coverage. He can definitely dual graves because, of course, with all the mini jumps, you have the ability to avoid the buckshot and the collateral damage, even without using flash. But there's no advanced vision uh, to give them defensive options in terms of pushing the top. So it's not really a viable option right now, at least, to split push. I think, especially, you can split push against Graves in lanes because, of course, there are minions there that you get to lifestyle off of as well. So there's lots going on here for Vasily in terms of, you know, uh, split push potential. And he's starting in towards the top lane to do that. But again, if he doesn't have the wards, like you mentioned, it would be a plenty of ways to lock down a Callista. It's not often that we talk about a Vici gaming comp falling behind in vision, but that is definitely what is happening in this game. The vision has been excellent from LGD. 
I guess they're just used to having the double sidestone coming down from down near Mudder and just their ability to put wards in smart places. Often, you could actually accuse Vici of being more overwarded than underwarded. Uh, sometimes they haven't been able to take advantage of all the vision they've gotten. So I can understand the movement towards a more carry style champion for Dandy. It's not the Rengar that we're used to. It's the Nilly. So it's a bit of a different flavor, but they haven't really lost out from the pick either. No, and Dandy actually has finished his Seraphs as well. So has a decent tank item there as well. Blue buff going to get donated over to her Tong. Acorn actually down the bottom. Got a Negatron Cloak. Like looking for an Abyssal Scepter, but just kind of hanging out and trying to keep the waves pushed out as well. And Vici grouping a little bit more. No, Dragon not quite up yet. And LGD, they're just looking for a fight. It's a bit of a stalemate though. LG just don't have the wards to be able to get a flank engage. They have good warding around the barrier especially, but they kind of need those more aggressive awards, maybe at the enemy Raptors, maybe at the enemy uh, Wolves, just to be able to have an angle for the Slicing Mountain to come out from a surprising angle with the Flash and, and the Ultimate there. They don't have that, so they've got only really the linear engage options that come in front of in vision. In a 5v5 situation in vision, it's so hard to force a fight because you know exactly what's coming and it's easy to disengage from that. Well, it's funny that you mentioned stalemates because that's exactly what we've got here in this game as far as warding especially has gone. There are no real objectives to fight over because Baron's are a little risky for both teams still. VG could poke LGD off and LGD will just fight VG if they do it. And probably with LGD, if they group together as five to get deep wards, VG will split push them and poke them off objectives as well. But if VG try and do the same thing and they get cut out of position, LGD is going to kill them with all their engage. So the stalemate's very... Obvious almost with the way the team comes play out, and neither team's willing to take that uh, that sort of a risk. Yet. No one's taking the next step to really overextend for initiation. We kind of saw that when Acorn teleported in and did the flash ult around the enemy red buff. It didn't really pay off there. They did end up winning the fight, but that was just having so many AOE ultimates available. And kind of the issue for Vici is that you think about how they're going to finish out this game. It involves sieging of some description, and against one or two of these initiation threats, that'd be fine. You can beat a balanced team fight comp with poke but because they have so many initiation options especially the massive amount of range that uh twins ultimate can cover 303 as this fight already got an agus for a team it's just so difficult for them to ever group and, and poke so I, I wonder what their win condition is if they can never get the wars to supplement the split push i mean if they never get a fight then they win condition. it's funny because both teams are clearly having like very delicately balanced win conditions and we've got a very close game all of a sudden they are ahead a few uh, 1,500 gold or so. VG's still up in Dragons. The next one's up in a minute. That's our probably biggest point of action coming through here. But these two teams have played so carefully, really understanding and respecting each other's comps. Yeah, and I would say that the Dragon taking advantage comes from LG just because if they can get in position early, if they have Cannon and say Lissandra at chokes, what's VG to do? They don't have too many options. They did force the Flash out of PYL, so they're starting to get the vision advantage for themselves. Akon's actually backing now. Has a pretty big buy. The Abyssal Scepter should be very important in a fight if Lissandra's able to get towards the back line. But look, I, I expect LGD to have position on these fights with all this CC, but they've kind of been harangued out of the Dragon Pit. I mean, the other thing is, well, you can't get poked by the three items there there as well. Void stuff is done for her tongue to go in for the, with the Death Cap and the Morello Nomicon, and we're still at a standstill here. Schwen is going to recall back. Does it with Aegis, actually, which is quite helpful against the poke from Dandy and Hatong specifically. Locket is now done as well for Vice, so that's a very strong pickup as well. But Dragon up in 10 seconds. Vici might actually just be better positioned here. Hard time on those items on Hatong is crazy to be so, so strong. And you, you say it very correctly. With these mid range ca uh, champions like Akon's uh, Cannon, like Wireless's Lissandra. The poke is going to stick coming out of her tongue, but he is split from his team right now. That might be awkward. Yeah, he's got to be careful. Walk the long way around, but Dandy doing a great job with the poke on the spears. PYL chunked to about one third health already, and Dandy still chucking spears in as well. It's just such a stalemate. I expect Feature to start the dragon soon. The engage will come. Flash is available across the board. Only PYL has a summoner down. And the initiation is going to come from somewhere. I mean, Mata positioning aggressively as well. Lissandra also going in Imp. I like the counter push there, but that mid tower is still up. So Vici don't feel super threatened by a Dragon. Very low there at about a third health. But Schwen's going to dive in. Kalista should be able to get it. Does do so for the fourth. And now Schwen going to dive in on top of Danny. But PYL is so low. Mata almost kills him himself. And now Vasily going to dive in. Carry that. Chucks Wales into the wall. But Akon's going in the middle. Just destroys Vasily with the help of Imp as well. And now Hatong and Mata have to run very far away. That's going to force a flash out there. 
Looks like more kills might come through. Dandy actually lived in there as well, so just two for one. But Schwen gonna chase him. Now Nidalee gonna look for the 1v1 here from the jungle, and Dandy's like, I don't really fancy this anymore. Does use the Tilling Smite. Gonna dodge the Bolt Maker beautifully, though. And Dandy, ever the duelist, might get away with it. Hatong as well gonna come in for the assist and does get it. Two for two. A surprisingly even fight there, you have to say. It was scattered, and that, of course, works to Vici's advantage. There was never the layered ultimate that they were really looking for there, LGD. The Exekill, no, does not come down for Very Wayless. nice. That was a clutch cleanse there from Hatong as well to get out. But Aegon snaps him with a shuriken. Still three for three, even again. And why did I ever question Danny's potential to play the AP Nidalee? He's been very fu smart fighting around the the edges of these fights, even though he doesn't have the tanky items. Of course, the implied tankiness of the Seraphs helps him out a little bit. But fighting so smartly, 3-1-1 one, and one now. Is doing work. Yeah, really sick mechanics on that last duel against uh, Schwen there as well. And Vici, the other thing we mentioned, it was a kill trade, but not an objective trade. Vici, that was their fourth dragon. And the fourth dragon means that this game does have that six minute timer as the fifth dragon. It equalizes any team comp. If you pick up that fifth dragon, you can make things happen. And Vici is so close to it so early in the game. I mean, it's crazy to me to think that a game of League of Legends could be decided purely on just dragon control. And this is sort of the cool thing that we're seeing a bit more, of course, in this. Uh, in 2015, and just in general, now that we've moved a patch as well from the LPL, teams are now deciding how do I want to win the game. Yeah, there's so many different win conditions, whether it's the team fights, you know, focusing on team fights and turrets and fast rotations, or whether it's picking up the dragon and baron buffs. The dragon has just become such a more important objective. It's not 130 gold in your pocket, it's one stack towards a potential five stack that wins you the game. I mean, at least in Plasma of the game, we did see, of course, the M36. They, they eventually won the game. Took them a few more, but yeah, it's a very strong buff for sure. As Carry Heat is kind of pushing out. Imp is all very strong here on this Graves. Three and a half items done for him. So he's added the Last Whisper there, along with a Vampiric Scepter to go with these other two there. Vasily adding a Last Whisper there is also big damage coming through as well. And Dandy even adding to that flat AP. Need to see Ladra done now for his Nidalee as well. He's doing pretty good poke damage before on the support. He's fairly tanky here from PYL. Going to be chunking out even more now. I guess the frustrating part of this game is that every time flashes are down on Vici's side, they've got no interest in even looking towards a skirmish, let alone a fight. They're just priced in to wait the six, the five, the six to five minute cooldowns for those summoners to come up, and it's, it's, it's an issue. They're looking at the side waves here. The side waves are starting to push top from Vici. The grouping comes in against from L from LGD. They don't have the best turret siege, but they're going to get it. Yeah, Wayless going in. Great flash, double W, and Akon dives in on the cannon as well. Carry going to get locked up here. That's a very instant three for zero. Now Schwen going to dive in there. Vi with the double, and LGD fire back. And yeah, the flashes were down. And that's where the engage finally comes in strong from LGD. Four instant kills with all the AoE CC coming through. They're going to look to Baron, but of course, the Prince of Thieves, Dandy, is alive. Oh, Dandy, not really someone you want to be tanking Nidalee Spears well. And he's going to go in now. Dandy, can he do it? Against some former teammates here as well. Going to be moving in there. Baron under half health. Now Dandy has to go in very soon if he wants to go get it. Almost pokes and actually misses. Imp goes over the top to zone him out. Dandy actually might just die from this as well. That should secure LGD the Baron. Dandy in a whole host of trouble as well. He's going to try and outplay Imp here. But Imp just going in aggressively. Two more crits and that's all he needed. Yeah, former teammates collide and Imp is the one that comes up big there. There was just nothing Dandy could do in that fight. On, on the Nidalee. Looks his best poking, looks his best going for any sort of assassination kills, but just has nothing to offer when his team is AoE down. And it's funny, that's two different fights. We've had both teams kind of utilize their team combo win conditions well. Vici got ahead in the first one for that fourth dragon, and Legendary got very far ahead after taking, again, the massive AoE team, but that their comp sort of demands of them. I mean, the kind of the issue is you, you get the fifth dragon, you still don't want to opt into a fight unless it's perfect from Vici. You need to get the massive poke coming in from Xerath. The split push was their more realistic win condition this game, and it's just never happened because they just have never been in a position for Mata to get the wars to support the split push coming out of Vasily. Yeah, and again, it's all the matter of no one could really break this stalemate. All the wards ended up in the neutral sections of the map, and LGD were just able to force a fight, and Vici might have got the fourth dragon, but if LGD shut them out of the fifth, they're probably not as worried as they might be. And they won't be too worried. Of course, they have the Baron buff now, so the lanes will be pushing consistently in their advantage. So much harder to contest Dragon when you've got waves across the map crashing into your inner turrets. 
less options here for Vici when it comes to contesting this fifth dragon. And you can see the Baron buff already helping LGD as well. So many wards in the right hand side of the map there on Vici's side of the jungle. And even some pink wards kind of creeping forward on the top side there as well. So it only took one fight for LGD with the Baron buff now as carry. Gonna find Imp here pretty tanky on the stone. Imp doesn't really fancy this fight, although now Cannon's gonna join in as well. Maybe he'll go in for it. Randall does get popped there. Minina has to run away here. Not really that tanky against his graves without Meganar going in. Imp might just go in for the solo. Turns around, gets the creeps instead. And K with the bounce back should be fine. He actually awkwardly cancelled an auto that of course would have brought Quick Draw up closer. If it was a crit, there was the potential for the kill to come up. He forces Nara away though, and they might take this inner turret in the top. I mean, all LG really want is pressure there, and that's good pressure on the carry by Imp. And you mentioned the flashes, they're coming back now. They're actually all back up for Vici, but defending with this comp is not as good as sieging or split pushing. No, definitely. Whenever a split push comp falls behind, they have the wave clear, they have the poke, but they just open themselves up to initiation every time they move towards a minion wave. And LGD very smart. There's our dragon back up. They've timed it very well here after the fourth there from Vici. We'll take their second now. And you know, the second dragon's fine. It's not uh, the be-all end-all. It's not that exciting, but most excitedly, oh, Zareth's going to go and doesn't steal it, though. Good smite there from Shwen and a great attempt from Hatong, but fall short there. It's absurd how far and how safely he could try to snipe away that dragon. But of course, level 17 is Zareth. That, that three points in the ultimate, the max range ultimate, has massive range they're not able to pick up what would have been a bonus fifth dragon and now lgd they're playing to their win conditions they're staying group there's no option whatsoever for a split push so although the mini waves are pushing well in terms of the bottom lane minions LGD just looking for the perfect dive. Yeah, Vici just having trouble. Dandy trying to keep LGD out of his jungle, but just can't really do it. People on now much tankier on this. Leon has the right to score for a bit of extra initiation as well. And LGD can group up as four or five strong here towards the top and take down a tier two. It's nothing Vici can do in terms of competing for this objective. They have no rage on Carry, who's been basically completely anonymous on the NAR. We've seen, been so, we've seen so many NARs massive in lane and then transition into team fight threat but he just kind of doesn't have an identity in the team comp that Vici put together. And that was maybe my next question here is that we talk a lot about these teams win conditions and how they've drafted here. There are very clear objectives that both teams are trying to pull off and they've had uh, successes in this game in different parts of it as well but it's just a case for Vici this whole time just feel behind with the way they've drafted. It does feel like there was always a point in the game where if they fell behind in objectives, they just wouldn't be able to compete for the victory. They've got the NAR any combo for team fights, but this is not a team you can at any point look to team fight with the comp they've picked. Nidalee Zareth forces them into a poke playstyle that they just really can't handle. I mean, is the change there to, is it the middle of the jungle that they might look to swap out here? Dandy obviously plays uh, quite a few champions here. Tonga, big Zareth player, but has others in his pool as well. Is there something here that Vici could have done to maybe balance the team fighting more? Because it feels like they could never approach LGD in this game as far as 5v5 goes, which makes it very hard to contest the objective you're trying to get. And once they commit to the Nidalee, it's kind of a narrow team comp. I guess you could have gone for more disengage and you know, maybe a Nami instead of the Annie just for more disengage flavor in a skirmish situation. The Annie seems kind of a... The identity crisis seems to be coming out here for Marta because you know, Flash Tibbers is the name of the game for support Annie and it just doesn't do a lot when she just dies in the AoE from all the Wombo coming out of LGD. And if we cast our minds back to this draft of this game, for me it might just be the second pick Callista. Clearly a champion that Vizzo is comfortable on, but kind of forced a lot into this comp. And LGD, as soon as I saw it, they just started rattling off hard engage. And look, we saw Crystal go massive against Vici on that Callista. They were never able to get to the back lines and she just mowed people down with the Bloodthirst to Hurricane build. It's just so much different when they already had the Vi locked in. They stack on all this extra dive. And there's no answers coming out of Callista in those sort of situations. There's just nothing she can do. Oh, and LGD very far in control now of this game. 10,000 gold ahead and knocking down turrets here. Baron has a one-off, but they don't really need it. And, I mean, the is going to come in. That's good. Demi actually a great flash out there. And Aegon defensively ulties there as well. But Wayland's going straight in. Aegon over the top as well. Massive damage there in the back. And now Schwen going to try and turn off her tongue. Carry's going to go down there as well. 3-0 already. Schwen does fall, but Dandy almost down there as well. Imp going very aggressive under the turret. Can't quite... Get the smoke screen onto her tongue, but PYL might look as well. I mean, Vici will defend for now. The ulti coming through as well. Akon has to be careful. Wailer stodges the bot. He should be fine here as well. And a very strong fight there. 3 1 in favor of Vici. Now they break the base. It was a massive NAR coming out from Carry, but it just didn't mean anything because there's no one in this team comp that can capitalize on that. Dandy at the back. He's poking. He has no mana at this point, so it has to back away. 
and LG, they eventually take the uh, inhibitor tower and the inhibitor. And Vici, now that they can no longer be as proactive around objectives as they were in the first, say, 20, 25 minutes, really struggling as LG to shove them back into the base. I mean, Dandy does great damage, even a locket to sort of support his team as well. Xerath is doing silly amounts of damage with an excellent EGC large rod on top of his three extra items. Even Vasily's doing good damage here as well, but as you mentioned, when it comes to 5v5, Elderly's comp cannot be outbeat. I mean, 064 has all the items to carry. We're going to see a replay right here. And you can see that Avicii tried to make their comp work. They used their champions effective. They forced the flash out. Akon has to defensively ultimate. So it's, it's, it's a very scattered engage, but the fight's actually on and Yeah, Wayless in trouble, who was the man in that replay, was doing so much work in that dive. And Vici with the pick might actually be able to get an objective, but not many up on the map, unfortunately. Yeah, the minion wave's pushing very aggressively in the bottom lane. It's equalized in the top, but in terms of objectives, Baron is live, but... Against all the team fight AoE still available, super risky for Vici. Yeah, I mean, that was a 60 second death timer there for Well, still 40 seconds now as well, but Vici, I think, speaks to just how this draft performs when it gets to this point in the game. We're 40 and a half minutes into this one already. LGD have ridiculous items, and so do Vici, but again, when it comes to straight up brawling, LGD's comp just does it far better. And the super minions are going to continue to push into the bottom, and they need Nar to go and start clearing them out. They're responding to the death time here. They're starting to aggress onto Baron, but it's risky. It is risky, but they can take it quite quickly here, especially with the Baron being a little weaker than old PWL. Here to throw some ulti and Akon trying to set up a good ulti there from PWL to go in. Now Zeta's Blake going to launch him in and Akon going to go through. Im gets an easy kill there onto Mata. Dandy hops over the wall and maybe looking to go back in, but Akon's doing so much damage to Vasily. Hopping around, but can't fight Im and Dandy going back in, tries to get the Baron, can't do it. Triple kill for Imp and 4-1 LGD. And that's the risk right there. Once the AoE magic resist shred comes in, you don't need much more bonus damage when you have already the AoE Wombo available. It didn't even matter that Lissandra wasn't there. And Akon's trying to backdoor this Nexus. Yeah, I mean, early teleport, he's doing a lot of damage already. Nar could be in a bit of trouble. Here. Actually, Akon's going to go aggressive on top of him. We'll get the kill there, and LGD have all the time in the world there. Nexus, Akon can just kind of hit it with his forward if he wanted to, but it's going down. They're letting Imp get in the picture right here. Massive game from him, 9-0-7. He had the answer to the Callista that he struggled to play effectively last week. The Graves did mo mo monstrous work there for LGD. But it just felt like Vichu were out comp. They played their win conditions very well in the early game. But the moment they gave up any semblance of an objective, it felt like they were strangled out because there was always a person with pick CC in a brush. And Kennen, a, w a win in the LPL for the split finally. Looper couldn't get it done, but Akon, his compatriot, will do there as well. And again, LGD had a very narrow comp. Arguably, it does one thing very well, but... Man, does it do it well. And usually the answer to such a strong team fight comp is the split push, but Callista never found the split push. She built for it. She had the Bloodthirst to Hurricane. She could mow down waves, but there was never the defensive uh, uh, way wards coming out of Mata to support that kind of playstyle. And it's always risky when there's so many initiation sources, the potential teleport coming out from the cannon. It kind of harangued them out of split push. And if you've got a team that can't stand up in team fight, can't, can't stand up in split push, gets an objective lead, but then eventually falls behind. There's just so many limited options there in terms of getting back into the game. Yeah, it seems like we do have a replay from that game as well, so let's go back and see just how devastating LGD's cop was. So we're 29 minutes into the game, we're going to see one of the first big AoE Wombo comes. Twin actually goes in very aggressively. They stack their CC pretty suboptimally in this fight. The carry ultimate onto where it's nice, but Acorn is the big winner here, getting a huge flash slicing Maelstrom for the initial double kill. Vici have to keep splitting, and that's kind of the flavor of this Vici team comp, is that they can't stand up in, in a team fight setting. They need to, to, to move the threats away. They need to remove the CC at AoE CC uh, pressure, but there was just so much AoE CC across the board that whatever they could do, it was not enough. Well, pretty creative double AP there, and we'll see if they can repeat it again. Guys, don't get, and we'll be back for game two very shortly.